Hello, everyone, and thanks for joining me today. Uh, for those of you that, that don't know me, my name is Andy Kriebel, and I'm uh, one of the leaders of uh, Makeover Monday, of the Makeover Monday Project. And for those of you that have not participated before, if you go to makeovermonday.co.uk, you can find all the information that you need about the project. So this is the homepage, but there's also information about the book, uh, how to get the data sets, uh, participate in the webinars, et cetera. So if I go to the data sets page, you'll see there's three, uh, let's see, so about 200, close to 200 data sets listed out on our page. So if you're looking just for some really unique data sets to play with, these are all out here for you. So I'm gonna use uh, the data set for 2019 week 39, which is evictions in San Francisco. And I've gone ahead and brought that up over in data.world. And what you'll see is the original visualization here on the left-hand side. This is one that we want to make over. So this looks like it's showing us the number of evictions for the top 10 neighborhoods in San Francisco. I assume from this viz that the top 10 means the top 10 evictions. Um, but overall, I find this graph very busy and hard to read. It looks like it's probably by day. Uh, so you see lots of volatility. We've got two huge spikes, but it's hard to tell what areas those are. I'm gonna guess the really tall one is south of market. And then the other really tall one must be maybe the mission. It's hard to tell because there's too many colors that are similar to each other. See this rainbow color palette. But I'm gonna actually go over to the source article and see what the author actually wrote about this. So uh, if I scroll down a bit, um, you know, there's information about the, uh, the, the Ellis Act, which is one way that the they, that land, it's basically the way that landlords can get tenants out. And in San Francisco, there are rent controls. And if people can get into one of those apartments, then they are super excited because they can't necessarily be thrown out as easily as others. And the rent would be significantly less. So I would suspect having lived near San Francisco that owners are trying to get people out with whatever means they can so that they can charge extortionate rents. So the, uh, the original author created several charts, and I'm going to look at these really quick for inspiration and see if there's things I might be interested in. So the first one is obviously just uh, the number of evictions. Uh, here's the evictions over, over time we looked at before. And then it looks like we have some information about the cause of evictions. And uh, let's see. So what are Ellis Act? Let's look specifically at Ellis Act. Let me go back up here because maybe that's something we could look at. Uh, the Ellis Act allows landlords to remove their properties from the rental market and require them to pay at a minimum of about 5,000 to the affected tenants. Um, right, so let's see. I don't see anything in particular that says Ellis Act. So what I'm gonna have to do is maybe we can look for that. Oh, here we go. So it looks like there's a field called Ellis Act withdrawal. So let's make a note of that. So I'm gonna copy that and stick it in my notes because uh, that might be something I want to look into. All right, so most evictions, evictions over time, causes, uh, the Ellis Act, and so on. So what else do we have here? Are there any, uh, here we go. So this is a bit, it looks like a uh, the number of cases, and it has a true false, but it doesn't really tell me anything. It just says true or false, so that's not very useful. And then we have a heat map that looks like it's the, uh, the reason for the eviction versus the neighborhood, and we can see that, um, there's a couple that stick out like owner move-in and nuisances. So I'm gonna make that notes of those as well. So owner move-in, nuisance, uh, I think I spelled that wrong, uh, N-U-I-S-A-N-C. Okay, and then looks like down the bottom we have uh, breach is another one that must be like breach of contract or something. And the hot spots as far as, so these would be, these would all be reasons. And then let's see, locations. It looks like we have a couple of hotspots. Um, it looks like maybe the mission, 
and the tenderloin look like the two highest areas of Michigan tenderloin. And making these notes because I want to have some information that maybe I could dig, dig into a bit deeper. And that's where it helps to look at the original visualization. And then of course there's a map. Um, I don't particularly like this map because there's lots of things overlapping. Uh, okay, so that's it for the original. So let's go ahead and get connected to the data. So I'm gonna flip over to Tableau and I'm gonna go ahead and connect to our data source. So it's San Francisco eviction notices. And I'm gonna first look at the uh, look at the data preview here. So we have some address information, postcode, uh, let's see, so this is, what is this called? So I'm just gonna call this a zip code just to simplify some of the names. So file date, and then it looks like we have these different true falses. So these must be the reasons for the eviction. And uh, it looks like there's probably only one per record. Okay, good. And then we have a neighborhood. So let me just rename this as neighborhood. Did I spell that right? Uh, nope. neighborhood. And then we have some location information. Uh, so let's see. So this looks like it's a point um, and it has a latitude and a longitude in that. So let me actually just copy that record and paste it in here. Okay. So it has a longitude and a latitude. Great. So I'm going to go ahead and actually use Tableau split function. So I'm going to hit the little drop down and then choose split. And Tableau is going to, it looks like it just split off. So let's copy this one now and see what that one's gonna do. So that looks like it just split out these, just this stuff inside of the brackets. And then uh, I'm gonna go ahead and split that again. You're on video, by the way. <laughs> and let, that's my son, Henry. So I'm gonna split that again. And then that'll help me get the latitude and longitude fields. Okay, great. So I'm gonna call this one longitude, longitude. And let's call this one latitude. And I can also set the data type here. So latitude, I'm going to go down to geographic role and set it to latitude. And then geographic role for the longitude and set that to longitude. Right. Okay. So I'm going to double check and make sure those fields are correct. So let's just put, uh, so let's double click on latitude and double click on longitude. Hey dude, I'm recording something. You're being loud. Okay, so I can see the city. Okay, sometimes I get the latitude and longitude backwards. So that's why I was doing that. All right, so let me go back into the data source again because, because I have all of these reasons going left to right, I don't really care about the falses. So I'm going to go ahead and select the headers for all of these reasons. Let's see, where are we here? Okay, so that's all of those. I'm gonna hit the drop down and I'm gonna pivot so I can get a longer table. Right, so now I should have a couple of fields here. So pivot field names is gonna be the reason. And then the pivot field values is, uh, we can just leave that like that. And I'm going to get rid of all of the falses. So I'm gonna add a data source filter. And on the pivot field values, I'm just gonna choose the trues because those are the only ones I really care about. And then I can go ahead and, uh, yeah, I can't hide that. All right, and then what else do we have here? So we have, uh, we can probably hide some fields now. So I'm gonna, actually, it's not gonna let me hide that one probably. Oh, it did. Okay, great. I thought it might not. And then we can hide that one as well. Right, uh, constraint state, I don't care about that. The file date looks like the important date because that's when it would have been filed. Um, everything else looks pretty good. So why don't I go ahead and go over to my new sheet. And we also have, notice that Tableau went ahead and put uh, supervisor district on here. Um, that's not actually something we want to aggregate. So I'm gonna drag that up and uh, set it there. Okay, great. So uh, when I start, the first thing I'm gonna do is create a series of sheets with different questions. So I'm gonna say when, uh, where, oops, where, uh, maybe who, why, uh, what, and how. So I do this so that I can just kind of give myself a head start and, and uh, it lets me know, uh, helps me, it helps keep me from forgetting things. So let's start with when. And when I look at when, I'm thinking of time series. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and drag my, right click and drag my file date field out. And let's just go ahead and pick, uh, let's just pick all records right now. And this is probably gonna be too busy. 
right? And then number of records, yeah, I see this is way too, way too crowded for me. So I'm just gonna go ahead and change this to maybe continuous months and see what we look at. Okay, so that doesn't look too bad. Um, and then maybe what I'd, what I'd do, I'm gonna copy this over and let's go ahead and make this, let's add a table calculation and smooth this thing out. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a moving average and I wanna do a six month moving average. So I'm gonna set my previous values to five because I have this, uh, when you're doing your table calculation, uh, the current value would be the sixth month. So five before and the current month equals six. And let's go ahead and we want it by month. So let's choose specific dimensions. Okay, so now I can, uh, I'm just gonna drag this on top of the other row to give me a combined axis. And uh, let's just do a bit of formatting. So I'm gonna just use some black and white colors. So where is my, uh, I have a black color pound here. So gray, there we go, that's good enough. So let's choose gray and then number of records. Let's maybe make that a light gray. Okay, so now we can see kind of uh, the, the trends along with those spikes. So, and those spikes are August, 2012 and February, 2016. So I'm gonna make a note of that, August, 2012. And what was the other one? It was February of 2016. Again, just making some notes here um, so, so I can have some things to potentially analyze later. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and rename the sheet. So I'm going to call this uh, six uh, months moving average. All right, and let's do a new worksheet. And I'm going to start looking at this different ways. So that's only one, but I can maybe look at it by uh, month and year, or let's say by quarter. Okay, that's good enough. And we get something like that. Let me just choose entire view so we can fit it in a bit better. And maybe I want to actually look at the quarters, the four quarters. Okay, so this, I'm just looking for some seasonality here to see if there's anything. So it looks like um, the uh, practices went down or evictions went down, they came back up and they're going down again. But I think in 20, yeah, so in 2019, we don't have complete data. So actually what I'm gonna do is I'm going to filter 2019 out of the data set so that I don't have any, um, uh, I'm not miscounting things or doing your comparison wrong. So I'm going to add a data source filter and I'm going to say year, uh, let's see, file date. So years, and I'm going to exclude 2019 and hit okay and okay again. Now I also should probably double check 1997 to make sure that has enough, uh, enough records. So let me take this down to months. And 1997 starts in June. Okay, so I probably should get rid of 1997 as well. So let me edit my data source filters and go back in here. And I want to exclude <clears throat> 1997 as well. So it looks like I have um, uh, 21 years worth of data. Okay, that's better. So then again, we can see these big spikes that we saw earlier. Now this doesn't tell me anything particularly useful. Um, so maybe what I'll do then is why don't I flip this around and make it a cycle plot. So now we're looking at uh, the trends of the years within Q1 and within Q2, Q3, Q4. Again, nothing is particularly standing out here. So maybe if I split this down by months then. Uh, yeah, so I'm not really, I'm just looking for some patterns here to see if anything sticks out. I moved some fill that looks pretty terrible. Uh, so let's do uh, standard. Okay, so this is the monthly trends. Let me, I'm just gonna make these spark lines just to see if we can see anything a bit better. So I'm gonna double click on the axis, uncheck include zero and make them independent. And if I shrink them up a bit, so let's do it uh, like that. Do I see anything in particular standing out? But you know, th this could be useful. So why don't I actually make this uh, continuous? I'll make the axis look a bit better. There we go. Okay, so and now I can go ahead and hide the header. So okay, so this this could be useful. So I'm going to call this my spark line. All right. So that's one thing. All right. Then let's go ahead and uh, let's create another new sheet. I did see on Twitter. Um, one of the users, LM70 calls me stuff. I still have no idea what his name is, but I'm gonna go ahead uh, and build the same thing he did. So it looked like he had monthly data and then uh, made this discrete and put number of records on the rows. 
and then made this a bar chart. So what does that look like? So I thought it looked pretty cool when he did it. Uh, so he kind of had it where it looked, uh, these were really short. So let me see if I can kind of mimic what it was doing. So let me, so his was doing something like that, which I think looks really cool. So maybe I'll use that or not. And actually a number of records I can rename. Let's call this uh, evictions and that'll fix that everywhere. Okay. so. Potentially, if I make this continuous, what does it look like? It's probably not going to look as good yet. I'll do that. Right. So this is an option as well. So I'm going to call this. Uh, let's just call this uh, uh, small bars, and I can fix that all up later. So I've got spark lines, a six-month moving average, which I like. I should rearrange these um, spark lines, the small bars. Maybe in my spark lines, I'll make those uh, black. Oh, that's a bit too black. There we go, something like that. I've got my small bars. Uh, I'll do the same thing here, maybe pick that same color. Right, what else do I need to do? Um, that's probably enough for the, uh, the when question. So let's move on to the where. So we do have um, mapping data. So I'm just gonna start with just looking at a my zip code. And notice I get the 38 unknown. That's because my default configuration is set up to UK. So I'm gonna do USA. And okay. And it looks like we have some invalid locations. Okay, so this, if I just put evictions onto color, we should get a filled map. There we go. So it looks like most of them are in this postcode, but that's not all that helpful to me. So, cause I don't really know these locations particularly well, um, but maybe this will be useful. So let's call this a evictions by zip code. And let's do a new sheet. So I'm gonna actually just duplicate and we can do a new worksheet, that's fine. And let's look at all of the individual um, evictions. So let's put evictions onto color. Actually, let's, uh, let me switch this back. So let's make this an average. And let's make this one an average as well. And maybe we want to summarize this by, I don't know, how do we want to break it down? Um, no, that probably should leave that alone. Right. And then if I kind of, uh, let me shrink these up a bit so I can see them here. Okay. So we can see where the evictions are. I think if I put evictions on color, what's that gonna do? Okay, so we have 1,185. That seems like an awful lot. I think there is some invalid location data. So why don't I just drag, uh, maybe I'll drag my uh, latitude field. And let's see, so I'm gonna special and choose non-null values. Okay, now we get the largest is 394, which is uh, whatever this location is. So let's put maybe neighborhood onto detail. Let's see if we can get a bit more information. So that's south of market. Okay, so this again, this isn't really telling me a whole lot because the colors aren't very useful. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this sheet. Might come back to it later, um, but I, I find it kind of hard to read this sort of map because everything's so tall and so smack, so packed together. So let's try maybe a density map and see what that looks like. And then we can maybe reduce the size of the dots. Um, yeah, I don't really like that either. So let's uh, duplicate the sheet. So the density doesn't work. So let's switch this back to a circle. Now maybe I should do something like uh, either a, a, like a, a circle map or a, uh, or a, a dot map or something, or I'm sorry, like a, um, a hex bin map. So I'm gonna create a couple of calculators fields. So I'm gonna call this round lawn, and I'm gonna add the round function to the longitude field I created. And let's say we round it to one decimal. And I'm gonna make that a dimension and make it continuous. And I'm gonna duplicate that and do it for latitude. So let's edit that and call it round lat and latitude. Right, so now I can take the round latitude and put it on latitude, round longitude, put it on longitude. Okay, now it looks like a mess because I need to assign these geographic roles. So I'm gonna click on the little um, 
the little icon, go down to geographic role and uh, to make this one latitude. And then on the round longitude, let's make that one longitude. And now suddenly we're back to a map. Uh, so something looks a bit funky here. So maybe I need to make the size bigger. Okay, so you see I've got four dots around the outside. That's not particularly useful. So I'm not quite sure. So I could kind of manually, uh, when I go in here, I could manually make this two, three, four, but I have two calculated fields I would need to change. So to speed it up, I'm just gonna create a parameter. And I'm gonna call this my uh, rounding parameter. And I'm gonna make it an integer and say a range, and let's say it goes from one to, I don't know, 10, something like that, step size of one. And then I can actually pass this in here instead. So rounding parameter. And then the longitude, I'm gonna edit that one and do the same thing. So let's do rounding. Ah, can't spell. And okay. And now if I show my parameter control, I should be able to, so as I increase the, um, the number of dots, you see this is starting to look a bit better because I'm, I'm kind of like um, generalizing uh, almost like binning the records together. So when I go up to three, it looks like it gets a bit busy then. So let me reduce the size. Yeah, so that's, to me, that's that's basically the same thing as the original map. So I'm gonna go back to two and maybe increase the size, right? Uh, maybe a bit more so we can see them a bit better. I like when they're nice and packed together. Yeah, something like that. But they also have these borders on them, which I hate. So I'm gonna turn the borders off and then turn the halos off. Okay, there we go. And you'll see we still have most of them are in here. Okay, that's fine. So I'm gonna call this one my rounded map. But I also like, when I build a rounded map, I also like to look at a hex map as well. So I'm gonna duplicate this sheet and then I'm gonna create, um, uh, I'm gonna do something similar. So I'm gonna call this my hex bin parameter. Now a hex bin, I'm gonna need it to be a float. So uh, let's just leave it like that for now, that's fine. And I'm gonna create two calculated fields again. So let's call this my hex x. And I'm gonna do hex bin x. And then I need to pass into it the x coordinate, which is the longitude and then the latitude. And I need to multiply both of those times my parameter because this is gonna help me scale it times hex parameter. Okay. And I'm going to make that a dimension as well. It's not something I want to add up, make it continuous. And now let's duplicate that and make it hex y. And then just need to change the hex bit to y. Okay, so let's replace these fields then. So my x and my y. And notice how these aren't geographic and I don't want them to be geographic. So uh, I can hide my rounding parameter. I need to show my hex bin. So sometimes you have to add a lot to this. So let's start with maybe, uh, I don't know, 10. Okay, that's done a bit. So maybe uh, 50, 100. So you can just kind of keep playing with, let's say a thousand. Okay, so that's too much. So let's say 500. All right, uh, maybe if I make the dots smaller, that'll be good. Let's check it out. Well, that looks pretty good, I like that. Yeah, so I, th I think this is a bit better than my rounded map. And what I would do is I I'm just gonna make it more square. So where's the edge of it? Come on, you stupid. It's not letting me grab the edge. There we go. So you'll probably end up making this kind of square. And then uh, maybe I can just reduce the size. Now, sometimes people go in here and make this a shape and then change it to something like a hexagon. So or maybe I can try triangles, let's try that. Let's try these. Oh, that doesn't, that looks pretty good. So circles or diamonds, uh, which one is better? Uh, I think I like the circles better. I'm kind of torn. Yeah, let's go with the circles. Right, but again, so I have my rounded map, which if I increase the, the amount on this, uh, it doesn't really work very well. So I think I like my hex bin map better. All right, so, um, so, so far I have a few sheets that I like. Um, okay, so evictions by zip code, et cetera. I wonder if I switch my 
spark lines around and I do something like this. Because what I'm thinking now is, could I take this, these spark lines and put them maybe above these small bars and see what it does? Maybe we could try that here. Right. Um, OK, so let's keep going then. So that is our, I think that's enough for our, our where. Well, actually, um, maybe I should bring in some, let's try this again. So let's duplicate. And I'm gonna put my supervisor district on color to see if I can see where they are. Right, so these are all the different districts. Okay. So that might be useful, might not be. I'm gonna leave it like that for now. Um, or I can put neighborhood on color perhaps. And I get a bunch of records like this. Okay. Okay, and maybe I like this one better. It's, it's hard though, because right here, if I go back up, I have these Japantown here but when I get off of it, okay, now these, should be, yeah, this looks pretty good. So, um, so I'm gonna call this one neighborhood. Um, but I also have a shape file on my computer that I can use as well. So I'm gonna actually edit my data source. I'm gonna bring in some spatial data. So I'm gonna add, this will allow me to do a cross data source join. And right, so I have my San Francisco neighborhoods. Okay, so there's no fields in common. So I'm gonna pick neighborhood. And then here I believe it's called, yeah, and hood. All right, and we get some information here. We have a geometry object, which is going to be our um, polygon and the rest of the fields I don't really need. So I'm just gonna go ahead and select all those and hide just to try to simplify my data a bit. All right, and I didn't look, doesn't look like I lost any records. So let's do a new worksheet. Let's see what it looks like when we do um, the geometry field. All right, so I'm gonna, I have this latitude field here. I'm gonna apply this to um, everything using this data source because I only wanna count records that have location information. Um, actually, let's do it a different way. We have, where's those fields we hid? Uh, that's okay, yeah, we'll just do it that way. All right, so now we have this the shape files. Um, and if I put the evictions onto here, this might be way too detailed. Uh, okay, that didn't, oh, I need to bring neighborhood into the view, so detail. And how's this look instead? Right, so you can see each of these is a neighborhood. It has, it's broken, it looks like it's broken up into some kind of city blocks. Um, but I could get rid of the borders. Yeah, so we could do something like that. And if I do white borders, it kind of breaks it down a bit. I'm not sure which one I like better. Uh, so let's do none there, borders. Maybe the white borders, something like that. Okay, so I'm not totally convinced about this one either. Okay, so this is, um, I'm just gonna call this one neighbor. Oops. Okay, that's enough time I've spent on that. Uh, so let's see, so who? Do we have any, any information about the people that were evicted? We don't, but maybe the supervisor district could be useful. So let's put that in the view and the number of evictions and sort that. So we could see supervisor nine, yeah, this is pretty pointless. Uh, so let's go ahead and put the neighborhood on here instead. And we can see, yeah, mission. Okay, that, this isn't too bad. So, but this is no longer who, this is um, evictions. Um, let's say top evictions by neighborhood. And perhaps I do like a top 10 or something on this, but let's wait for that. Right, okay, so there's not really anything for the who, the why. Okay, so why should be, we should be able to, so when I look at why I'm thinking the reasons people got evicted. And if we drill down here. Okay, so we see most of them are, are owner move-in and breaches, nuisances. Okay, so what does that look like compared to my notes? So, uh, so we have breach, nuisance, owner move-in and Ellis Act withdrawal. Okay, so Ellis Act withdrawal is the third biggest. So I wonder, maybe I can create a set on the Ellis Act withdrawal and we can see how that compares to other things. So reason, 
So create set. I'm going to call this my Ellis Act ritual. And OK. And I'm just going to put that on color just so we remember what it is. And let me edit my colors. I don't like the default colors for sets. So let's go with um, let's go with the dark and the maybe the light, something like that. OK, that's good enough for now. Um, but let me see. So if I go ahead and um, what I want to do now is go back to my six month moving average. I'm curious to see what this now looks like for the Ellis Act withdrawal. So I'm just going to move this to the set to the filters and it should show me quickly. Okay, that's quite different than the, the other. So let me actually put it onto the columns instead. And it doesn't follow the same pattern. Does it? No, not really. Okay, but that's something we can maybe look at later. Um, okay, so we got that. Um, I know I don't want this map, so I'm going to trash that one. Uh, I don't want this one either, so let's delete that one. The rounded map. I think I like the hex bin map better than the rounded map, so let's delete that one as well. I'm just trying to clean it up a bit. Neighborhood shapes. I think that one might be okay. So the Y. Okay, let's see. Is there anything else we can look at for the why? It doesn't look like it. Okay, and then the what? Is there anything we can do for what? Um, so I'm going to go back to my preview. And we have addresses, some information in the neighborhood, the reasons. Okay, so there's nothing for the what. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that. And then the how, that I think that's the same thing as the why in this case. So how were they evicted? So I'm going to delete that sheet as well. And we have evictions by neighborhood. Um, what if we do something like, let's put the LS Act withdrawal on here and see which, maybe there's some neighborhoods that were larger than the others. Um, actually, let me go ahead and duplicate the sheet first. So duplicate. And I'm curious to know, so when I just put it on color, it's not particularly useful. So I'm going to make this a percent of total calculations at table calc. Percent of total. And we want to do it for each neighborhood. Right. So let me swap these around. So my, my uh, LS acts are first. OK. Is there anything really sticking out here? So Lincoln Park. OK, nothing really sticks out. Let's see, so let me go back to this site and look what he says again about the Ellis Act withdrawal. We were evicted from our apartment in Tamoyne. Is that common? So they seem to account for 15% evictions in the mission. I'm not sure about nothing. Okay, in fact, if you look at a lot of neighborhoods, you'll see there seems to be some correlation between the coolness of the neighborhood and the percentage of evictions that are, for example, Hunter's Point are not typically considered cool areas to live. Okay, so why don't I do cool areas to live in San Francisco. All right, six coolest near, okay, so maybe, maybe what I should do is create a group for these. All right, six coolest neighborhoods. How old is this? This is, okay, not too old, July, 2017. Actually, if I go back, can I see all six listed here? Okay, so let's go ahead and create a group on the neighborhood. Create group. Um, actually, we could just create a set. So create set. And I'm going to call this cool neighbor neighborhoods. And we have mission in a Richmond marina. Richmond. Let's see. Back is it? Let's see. Oh, the mission, sorry. The mission. Um, mission in a Richmond arena. It's much quicker. Hayes Valley, North Beach. North Beach and Lower Haight. Uh, right, so this must be called something else. 
Um, maybe it's hate Ashbury. So let me just hit okay for now. Okay, so let me pull this. Okay, so let me lower hate. Oh, come on. Oh, God, I, allow, I hate this stuff. Uh, maybe people know about hate Ashbury. We love to flock to lower hate for their, for their fun. This neighborhood is not. Um, more you know, extends as far east as in Hong. Right. So. So let's see if there's another name for it. Here we go. Let's just go to Wikipedia. Right, uh, sometimes referred to as hate Fillmore. So let's see if we have hate Fillmore in here. So hate. hate Ashbury. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to my map here. So let's look at this. So it looks low, that doesn't help. Okay, that's useless. Let's see if we can find a map of it, uh, maps. Okay, so it looks like, so we've got Hayes Valley. I think that was one of them. We might be called something else in the data set. So hate Ashbury, lower hate. Okay, so let's go back over here. That's fine. Uh, I think the one that had our neighborhoods might be better. So uh, let's see what we have here. Hate Ashbury, Hayes Valley. So that looks like this piece right there. Okay, I'm gonna zoom in on the map. So let's go to map layers and let's turn on uh, put the streets, maybe we can see it. New breaths, here we go. Um, so I Ashbury. All right, so it's by the park. That's the park. So that's not up here. So it's on this side of this park. It has to be this area. Okay, we're just gonna go with hate Ashbury. Okay, so let me close that, reset my map, and then I'm going to edit my set and put uh, hate Ashbury on there. It doesn't look like this data set has it split out that way. Okay, great. Um, all right, so if we now look at our cool cities, uh, right, let's go back to the beginning. And I'm going to maybe look at our cool neighborhoods versus the others. And you can see the cool neighborhoods, there's a lot less um, evictions. So, okay, so maybe that's something worth considering then. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna cool neighborhoods. And I'm going to just put, uh, maybe a big number or something. No, that's not what I want, evictions onto text. Mm -hmm. And let's call this a cool. And then my cool and my not so cool areas. And then let's duplicate that one here. 
I'm gonna go ahead and make these centered and centered. And then let me edit this text. So I wanna move this below. Oops. I'm gonna make this a big number. So let's make this maybe like 24 point in Tenlo semi bold. I like. Okay, so then I can go ahead and hide this header. And I don't want anything in my tooltip, so let's get rid of that. I'm assuming this is going to be useful, but uh, and then I want to go ahead and get rid of my borders. So let's go to the row dividers. Set that to none. Okay, so now we kind of have some some big numbers. Um, so cool bands. All right, what else could we look at here? So if I look at this by, let's see, if I look at this by something else, so let's put reason here just to see. Maybe there's reasons. Uh, all right, so let me make this a percent of total. Actually, let me undo and duplicate this so I don't ruin what I have already. And let's put uh, the reasons here. I want to know which ones are the, have the highest reasons. So I want to do percent of total, take it down. And right, okay, so that looks good. So what I want to do now is see which ones are the highest. So look at the correlation. So these all look like they're relatively similar, except for the Ellis Act withdrawal. So again, maybe that's something to look into here. All the other numbers look relatively similar. So if I go back to the article that this guy wrote, um, correlation being the coolness and everything, the percent of evictions that are LSI. Okay, so we are kind of identifying that. So I'm gonna save this as a percent of total. And I'm gonna go ahead and format that. So default properties number format and set it to uh, and I'll probably zero decimals is fine. Yep. Okay, now I probably should do one. Default, let's do one. So default properties, number format, decimal. Okay, so again, this is where the Ellis Act could be useful. So I think we might be onto something here with that. Uh, what were some of my other notes? So we looked at that, the locations, mission, and tenderloin. Okay. So let me duplicate this again. And uh, let's go ahead. I want to look at, let's just make this a put on color instead. And let's look at the neighborhood. So this is something that they had in the original. Right, and we see the same sort of thing here, so non-payment nuisance. And what were those two neighborhoods? The mission and tender line. So uh, actually, let's look at it by cool and not cool. Um, where's my... Right, so. And I want to do, let's see, how do I want to do this yeah, within each neighborhood? Yep, so that looks good. So the cool neighborhoods are up here. So let's show the header for that. And then let's, so the cool neighborhoods, there's a lot fewer. Okay, that's not particularly useful. Right, so we have that. We have some bands. Uh, Top evictions, let's put the Ellis Act withdrawal on here and see what we get. Uh, no, I don't want to do that. Uh, that's already on here. Okay, that's fine. And then top evictions, so we did that. The shapes, let's put the Ellis Act withdrawal on here and see what happens. Yeah, so and let's make this and table calc percent of total uh, for each neighborhood. I don't want to do the other way around. 
Okay. So this is not going to show us, right? So the highest percentage is the mission. Uh, and let's see. And then the mission's the highest over here as well, but it's much, much darker here. So 30.26%, 19.8%. So that could be useful again. And let's look at maybe look at our um, XBIN map, LS Act withdrawal. We should get something similar. Okay, so you can, that's interesting because now we can see the locations a bit better, which ones are the LS Act withdrawals. Okay, I don't particularly like that though. Evictions by the postcode. So let's break it out this way again. Yeah, so that's not all that useful. And then, so in San Francisco, everybody kind of talks about things as neighborhoods. So, um, that's why I think I'm going to go with neighborhoods instead of postcodes. So I'm going to, I like this one. So let's, uh, I'm going to color this one green. So I like both of these. So color those as green. Okay, this one I don't want. Maybe this one, so green. This was just so I could see the neighborhoods. This is potentially useful. So let's make that green. Uh, this is, right. So it depends on if we focus on the spark lines. Okay, so in or out. So I could call this one. And then call this one. Let's actually just call it other. Okay, so that gives us some information here. Okay, not quite sure what, but it gives us something. And then our small bars, if we do LS Act withdrawal here. It's the most of them are there, but that's expected because there's less less homes there. Okay, so that might not be particularly useful. Maybe not for the spark lines either. I think maybe I'm gonna maybe I'll create some kind of action or something. Hexbin map, neighborhood map, we don't need. All right, so let me start organizing some of these sheets. I'm gonna take this and move it to the end. Uh, let's take our neighborhood map and move that to the end. Um, the, the, the bands, this could be useful, but I think I can do that through a different way. So let's make that one green because we want that one. Uh, okay, so let's go to the sheet and look at this one again. So this is our top evictions by neighborhood. But this one is the Ellis Act. So if I'm gonna focus on the Ellis Act, I think I should do it this way. So, uh, then the Y, so color green. Okay, great. Okay, uh, maybe if I look at my, let me try this again, duplicate. What if I just put the reasons on here instead? So reason, I think that's what we looked at earlier, yeah. Okay, so let's start putting a dashboard together. Not quite sure what I have yet, but I'm gonna just start throwing some ideas out here. So let's do a new dashboard and move it to the beginning. And there we go. Okay, so let's call this. I should start over. And then I'm going to go ahead and um, first I'm going to just kind of go ahead and uh, when I set it to automatic, that's going to fill up my screen. And then I'm going to switch to fixed size. That kind of fits everything in there nice and neat. Um, so let's see, let's focus on the Ellis Act. So um, which neighborhoods have been, uh, let's say, uh, the impact of the Ellis Act um, are some neighborhoods being targeted. Okay, 
and let's go ahead and center these. I'll probably change this title, but I'm going to start with it this way. So let's make this maybe 20 semi-bold. And then let's make this maybe like 15. OK. So I first probably should get a definition of the Ellis Act. Um, so he had something up here. So that's that one. OK. Trying to find some kind of some kind of definition in here. The Ellis Act allows landlords to move their properties. Okay, so let's. Hoping I can get some. Okay, here we go. Okay, the, oh, this is cool. The Ellis Act is a state law which says that landlords have the right to evict tenants in order to go out of business. Ah. So it's a way for them to get out of rent control. Um, uh, that's fine, let me just leave like that for now. Okay, so I think I'm going to start with, I think maybe I'm going to, let me put a container in here and I'll stick a blank in there to start. I'm going to try my spark lines here and then maybe those small bars underneath just to kind of see what this looks like. So if I hide the header there, do all of these line up nice and neat? So if I put the end, looks like they probably do. So this is, let me go back to my spark line. These are continuous months, my small bars. Let me do it by year first. Come on. Do this by year. Come on. Let's make this continuous months. I'm just trying to match these up compared to the other ones. Okay, so if I go back here, right, so I can now shrink that up as well. Maybe, uh, let me see, let's make these, uh, hide the headers on both of these. And then I'm going to hide the header. Okay, and then hide the title, hide the title. And then uh, I think I'm going to hide these headers as well. Now I can see the years in between the two. OK, so let me do a quick bit of formatting. OK, I like that. Um, so let me do some formatting here. And I'm going to get rid of my grid lines. So zero, none, zero lines, none. OK, this one, same thing. Okay, and then, oh no, this one I need to also get rid of the row dividers. And then this one, I wanna get rid of the row dividers as well. Uh, and then what if I get rid of the column dividers? Let's see if that might be cleaning it up too much. And then on this sheet, small bars, I need to get rid of the borders. None. Ooh, I don't think I'm gonna like that. Yeah, that's not good. So a small point. Let me switch this back to screen months then. Okay, no. Let me switch back again. And let's just make them thinner. Uh, right. So yeah, we can do it this way. Let's make it. So 
now they're as small as they're going to go. Oh, okay, that's pretty good. Um, yeah, so I think that's good enough. Let's see if I can do that. Right. Okay, so let me, I'm gonna stick a highlight action on here later. So let's maybe shrink this up a bit as well. Okay, but you see how these all line up nice and neat now? I like that. Okay, so we have that as our timeline and then I wanna use one of the maps. Now, which one do I want to use? Um, I don't want that one. Let's see the hex bin map, neighborhood shapes. Running out of time here too. Um, let's see, let's do the, yeah, let's do the neighborhoods, that's fine. But I wanna put another container inside this one and put my hex bin shapes inside of that one. And that. And something's happening here, so let's get rid of. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. I need to go back to my neighborhood shapes and remove that. And I think I'm going to go to my map layers and uh, remove my base and the land cover. Okay, and then what if I change it to streets? Okay, yeah, I'll do something like that. That looks good. Subway, train stations, house numbers. I don't think I need any of that. And then, uh, so this is my percent of total evictions. Is that going to change if I clear the table cap? The colors are going to stay the same, right? Okay, so let's um, the colors and let's go with the gray theme again. So let's say with gray. Okay, and then color. If I make it solid. Okay, yeah, I like that better. <clears throat> okay, so then these maps I'm not going to need. So I'm going to, uh, that's fine. I'm just not going to worry about it for now. All right, so now this one I can again shrink up. So let's hit the height. Let's make it 100 and see what it looks like. Okay. And then let's edit the height on this one. Maybe make this, so that's, okay, so maybe five, just so it's an easier number to remember. And then edit height, let's make this one 80. Okay, yeah, that's good. I know these are the same, I just like the, the way that these look, the bars and the, and the, um, the bars and the lines together. Let's see what that looks like now. Okay, that's good enough. So we now, now know the neighborhood and we want to look at maybe the, uh, the reasons. My title, let's see. Why are the tenants? labels and then center the title. Okay. Um, and then we could probably, so let's format this and let's get rid of the borders and the lines. So that's fine. And then get rid of the access rollers. Um, so I think on the bars, I'm going to only label the top five. So where's my reasons? My fly sheet. I'm running out of time here as well. That's okay. Sometimes it takes more than an hour. Um, top five labels. So if rank uh, some evictions is less than or equal to five, then we want to do 
some evictions. Yeah, otherwise nothing. Right, so now if I put that onto the label shelf and right, so let's say match the mark color, down below medium. Okay, so now I can hide the header there. Okay, that should be good. And let's make this see. Let's make uh, this, this little screen thing here is on the out of the way. Sorry, I've got a little screen thing here for the. Okay, good. All right, so um, we probably should let me edit the alias here, so this shouldn't have the capital D. I don't think I should highlight the Ellis Act withdrawal here because that's going to imply the colors are the same as over here. So let's get rid of the Ellis Act withdrawal and let's just make them all the same color like we did before. Or maybe we can just put the um, evictions onto color so everything matches throughout the view. So color. And I'm going to now change the default uh, I'll just let me change the default color. I'm just going to use that gray palette again, gray. All right. And I don't want these to match the mark color anymore. Automatic, and let's just make them all the same color. There we go. Okay. So the reason I'm doing that is because I want it to kind of uh, use the same color palette as the, as the view. All right, so we can get rid of that. Um, and then maybe the, uh, so what I'm saying now is, is the Ellis Act, the impact of the Ellis Act. So I don't think, um, what were my big numbers? Cool bands. Um, right. Maybe I should do something about the cool neighborhoods instead. Let me see, so if I put this, let me just put a container up here, put this into the container, and then let's put uh, the cool bands. Let's maybe, I'm just trying to decide now what I want my story to be. So, um, Maybe I'll just make that a filter. So let's go back to this sheet. And let's put this as a, okay. And then show members and set. Or no, I wanna do show in out. So all, and then I wanna make this apply to uh, all using data source. Okay, so now in my, um, I think what I'm going to do is just look at it as um, the cool versus non cool neighborhoods. So I'm going to change my direction here. So let's see. So let's take this and let's show the filter for the inner out of cool neighborhoods. Uh, and then um, Let's do, mm, let's see, maybe I should just go with the bands. Um, so let's see. Um, okay, so let's left align that then. Right, all right. So I think one other thing I want to do here then is put a I'll put a blank object in here and let's edit the height. Let's make it uh, four. 
right, so I need to make this, is it eight? Nope. Uh, nine, I think that's it. There we go. And then I want to format this object to have a uh, line. So let's do that. There we go. I'm just trying to create some kind of space in here. Um, so our tenants in cool neighborhoods less likely to be evicted. Um, and then what I could do is I could just put a filter action on here. So I use that as filter. And then what does it come along with the filter on? Okay, so I need to set up my filter action. So let me remove that. So dashboard actions, uh, filter action. So cool. And I want to filter everything that's not cool. And then the field I want to use is my, my uh, where is it? Um, oh, it's not letting me use. So, okay, that's fine. I can do a set action instead. So add action. Uh, let's see, why is it not letting me do that? That's weird. I might need to create a group instead. I would have thought it would let me do the, um, let's see, so let me put the, where the heck is it, neighborhood? Let's do it like this. Okay, so I can create a group of these. So group, and this would be my, and let's hit up my group. And then include other. Actually, I'm going to do all uppercase. I like how Ann Jackson does this. Right, and now, if I put that there instead, and let's put neighborhood group onto there. And then I can take that off. Uh, yeah. So let's, mm, I don't want any tooltips on here either, and that's fine. Okay. So let me go back and let's check the text here and make sure. Okay, good. So um, what I want to do now is put that on the group instead. So let's do, Cool neighborhoods. Um, oh, it doesn't let me do replace references. Okay, so let's do neighborhood group. And let's select all for now. That's fine. And then I want to apply to all using this data source. All right. So what does this look like up here now in the upper right? So I probably need to make this wider. Okay, there we go. That's better. Okay. Um, and let me fix this. Okay. And then let's get rid of the borders around this. All right. Uh, okay, so, all right, so let me stick this in presentation mode and see what it looks like. Okay, I'm not completely sold that this is great, but uh, dashboard actions, add uh, filter action. I want to go from my bands to everything else, and I want to do it based on the neighborhood group. And I'll do it on select. Mm -hmm. Show all values when done. Okay. 
Um, okay, so let's see what that does. Cool, yeah, so you can see in the cool neighborhoods, there's a lot less likelihood for people to be evicted. Um, my other son just got home. Okay, we look not so cool. Now you can see kind of where the holes are and where the where the um, not so cool neighborhoods are. So if I now go back and look, so in the cool neighborhoods, uh, okay, so I need to fix the, I need to correct the, no, I don't. So you can see owner move in breach, nuisance, L fact withdrawal. And then is it the same order here? Yeah, same, same order. Okay, and then maybe on this one, I'll make this, uh, I'll filter that as well. So if I look at Ellis Act withdrawal, come on, oh, it's not filtering. Dashboard actions. Uh, so add action. Let's see. So I'm going to go from the Y. So close my on select, and I want to go to everything except for the Y. And the field I want to target is my reason. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, so let's click on that and see what it does. Okay, so now we can sort of pick any uh, anything here. Right, okay, so let's go, I'm gonna pin my map as well. Uh, and then I'm gonna go ahead and hide the toolbar. And I'm gonna go up to my map options and hide the uncheck pan and zoom and uncheck that. Okay, so that simplifies it a bit. Right, so I'm gonna have to be done with it for now because I'm running out of time. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to stick a, let's see if it's gonna let me do it. Let's stick a text box in here. And I'm gonna say, um, Data source is, um, I think it's uh, data SF. And then and I'm gonna make that a little bit smaller. It doesn't need to be very prominent. And I like to make it a little light gray. Right, but I need to move that to the bottom. So I'm gonna just double click that and switch these around and that will shrink it down to the bottom. And I'm going to give it a bit of space. So I want to go down to my padding and I want to give the top some more room. That way it's not, there we go. It's not all smushed in there. Right, um, the other nice thing maybe we wanna do is maybe have it be able to filter by neighborhood. So I'm gonna go ahead and add one more dashboard action and add a neighborhood filter. So filter, I wanna go for my neighborhood and then I wanna update everything except the neighborhood and then do it based on the neighborhood fields, so neighborhood. Okay. And now if I click on mission, okay, you'll see there's only, there's 55,000, but you can see what the reasons were for these different uh, evictions. So if we look at what was one of the ones that was uh, a not so cool area. So that's cool. So maybe, I think this is one of the ones that wasn't very cool. So it allows for a lot more um, interactivity here. So. Right, so what's the last thing I want to do? I need to do some cleanup on my tooltips. Uh, so I'm gonna say, uh, let's cancel that, let me hover over first. So March 2000, right, so tooltip. And then, and then uh, evictions, there we go, that's good enough. So we can hover over, all right, and then tooltip here, I'm gonna copy that and do the same thing on the small bars. Mm -hmm. Oops, I don't want these other tip. And then I didn't use that. Um, I didn't use that either. Didn't use that, okay, why? All right, so I don't need that in the tip. 
And I'm just doing real simple tool tips here. Probably don't even need them actually, but when you get down here to the ones that aren't labeled, I think it'd be useful. And then no tool tips here. So I think that covers everything. I don't really like this map, how it has this background. And I think I'm going to actually get rid of that. So map layers. And I'm just going to uh, wash the whole, well, I could either uncheck everything or just wash the whole thing out. Uh, right. So I think that's pretty good. Don't need the labels either. Um, maybe what I'll do is show view toolbar. And I want to go ahead and zoom in a bit. So let me just select that and try zooming. Is it going to zoom in? No. Let's see. So where is my map options? Here we go. So I need to show the, the map search. Um, pin that. And then I want to, um, let's see. So map. Why am I not able to find this option? Pan and zoom. There we go. So I want to do a zoom search. Let's just see what happens. And we just want to map this. Okay, perfect. So let's just zoom in ever so slightly and then hide that. And again, go back to my options map. Uh, map layers. No, that's not what I want. Map option. Always get that wrong. And turn that off. Turn that off. Uh, Right, and then I think that's it. So, uh, so makeover. <clears throat> Let me save this now. Uh, Twenty nineteen. So, makeover Monday week uh, thirty nine. We can vacations in San Francisco. And then the last thing I need to do <clears throat> is go back to and create an extract. And that's fine. I think I don't want that remove. And that's fine. Okay, extract. And I want to put that in my. Snave. Okay. Come on. Just take a second for it to import all of the records. All right. So let's go back over to our map and save. And I'm going to fix my title to make it all uppercase like everything else. Um, not quite sure that I actually answered the question here. So I probably I wonder if I should change the title. Um, uh, I'll just leave it. I think that's going to be too big now. So let me make the font maybe 16, 18. Let me try it again. Usually just play around with it until I get it right. Okay, good. Now I want to fix the size of that. Uh, fix the size of that. Fix the size of that. Fix the size of that. Okay. I think I'm good. So here, fix the size of that. I then usually like to go up to, so let's go to this object here and make it a bit lighter. Um, and I'm gonna make it a bit thicker as well. So I don't know how to do that. To edit the height, maybe I'll make it uh, 11. Not too far. So I wanna make it slightly thicker. Right, all right, uh, let me go back and change this again. So the color, I'm gonna use that color, which is to like 90%. All right, one more thing. I want to go ahead and go to my Y sheet because I wanna be consistent with my, my, uh, my upper or lower case. So I'm going to create a calculated field. I'm gonna call it reason upper. 
and I'm just going to say upper reason. And then what I can do is I can uh, go to the reason field and I want to swap it out everywhere. So I'm going to do replace references and swap it out for reason upper and everything should just switch around. And then I need to sort this in descending order uh, field uh, descending by evictions. Okay, there we go. And now you'll see when I go over to my dashboard, we'll see I now have these nice little labels here. Okay, uh, I guess that's it. It took uh, quite a bit longer than I was expecting, but uh, hopefully you got something out of it. Um, I really enjoy doing kind of data exploration like this. And thanks to uh, LM7 for his inspiration on the spark bars. And yes, I do know I'm repeating information here between the, the spark lines and the bars, but I think it helps add some context. Like, so for example, if I get rid of that, does it look as good? Um, maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. Um, how about if, what if I get rid of this one? But you can play around with the different, you know, um, maybe I don't need both. Um, I, I just thought that it might give it a bit more context if I look at it like that. So, um, yeah, I think I'll leave it for now. I know I'm duplicating the information, but I like the way it looks. Right, so last thing, I'm gonna go ahead and um, publish it up to Tableau Public. So that's fine, I wanna do that. And then the server, Tableau Public, save the Tableau Public. Hopefully it goes relatively quickly. It's like watching paint dry sometimes. All right, Dan, let me go to Twitter. And I wanna find LM7 on here. So I can make sure I give him proper attributions while that's loading up. I'm gonna go ahead and edit the details. Um, oh, Our attendance and cool neighborhoods less likely to be evicted. Okay, I'm not gonna show the sheets as the tabs. Um, okay, and then I wanna make sure I give him at, uh, proper attribution. So LM7, and let's see if I can find his, or her, I don't know if it's a male or a female. Um, here we go, so I'm gonna go up here and choose this viz and make sure I give them proper attribute inspiration. And that's it. So I can now, um, I have everything set up um, as uh, in my profile, I have everything set up by default as hidden. So I'm gonna go back over to my profile and unhide that. And I don't know why it didn't give me the option to allow others to download it. So let me see if I can fix that. Uh, so let's edit details. Yeah, I don't know why. See, there's usually an option here to allow people to download, but it's not it's not there for some reason. Well, I'll see if I can get that fixed so that you're able to uh, download the workbook if you want to have a look at it. So. I guess that's it. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed it uh, and it wasn't too boring. It took me, what, uh, I guess by the time I got done talking and uh, and all that probably about, uh, so I'm probably an hour and 15 minutes, something like that. But uh, what I wanted to do there was show you how you can, how I go about exploring a visualization. So I write those kind of questions across the bottom, the you know when, where, who, what, why, how, those sorts of things and turn those into um, charts and then sort of pick and choose the ones that I like, that I like the best. Um, so let me go ahead and export my dashboard as an image. And then I'll go ahead and tweet that out and provide a link. 
And that's it. Have a great day.